Well, thank you for the opportunity to give this presentation on talking a little bit about how we use imaging in our perioperative and intraoperative use. And this is a case actually that was done with my uh, former fellow, Dr. Andrew Brown, who's at University of California, Irvine, and myself, where we used intraoperative OCT to assist in an optic pit with macular schesis and attachment. So Gaurav, how do you kind of approach cases of optic pits with macular schesis? I think Rishi, uh, you know, the best uh, option typically I do is just, uh, thermal laser treatment, uh, you know, usually uh, around the optic nerve, like we've all been taught. And if that doesn't do it, then typically uh, a vitrectomy, but you, you try to do the non-invasive options first. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think having intraoperative OCT sort of helps you when you're doing these procedures. So you don't really create a macular hole. Uh, and that's kind of the advantage of uh, intraoperative OCT for these cases. Yeah, and this is a great case that kind of illustrates that to your point. This is a patient who presented to me, 35-year-old, 2200 visual acuity. You see a large area of uh, macular detachment, essentially, with subretinal fluid present. You can see the pit very easily on the actual color photograph images. You can see that as a darkened spot right there. I'll show you with a little laser pointer where that is right there. So that pit is very, very visible to you as an individual. And you're Looking at this patient, you can see the the fundus autofluorescence image, I think, is helpful because you can see the atrophy area, the area of fluid potentially, and, and that might not get better. And so we have a conversation about, you know, the perioperative uh, outcomes assessments and what we expect to see for the patient over time. This is that actual OCT before um, the actual surgery is done. And to your point, you know, you have this membranous sort of change right here, which may be hyaloid, may be ERM, it's hard to say. Uh, but we'll know when we do the surgery, and clearly you have the macular views that show you that you have, you have that retinal uh, change as well. And we'll show you a couple advanced photographs here before we even get started, showing you that there's a very thin retina uh, right over that area. And so, to your point, uh, you could have started, I guess, with some thermal laser here. Would you do a thermal laser in this sort of patient? Gaurav, given the kind of clinical history, or would you just go right to surgery for this? I, I, I think, you know, the, the, you had a conversation with a patient, and, and I think that's the most important thing. Some people want not non-invasive things first. But again, with thermal laser, you always worry about having this sort of scar in a in a 30-year-old. So I think with new tools such as our new vitrectomy machines and new imaging, I don't think it's unreasonable uh, to to go to this route. Uh, we didn't have all these tools when laser was kind of the only option. And then we kind of went down the line. Yeah. And talk to me a little bit about your surgical approach to these patients. And I'll show you what I did. But what's your surgical approach when you see a patient like this? So I think that initially, Rishi, I, I would just, uh, you know, I would do a vitrectomy. There, there, there's pros and cons of ILM peeling. If I do peel the ILM, I typically take the ILM and put it over the optic pit and sort of stuffing the pit. And I think that's a technique that's worked. Uh, now, as you know, most of us don't have hundreds of these cases. You know, we, we, we have like our five or 10 we've seen in our careers. And because we've seen, all of us have seen so few, we don't really have one technique. It's, it's, it's really what worked the last time. So I would say the last two or three I've done, I've done vitrectomy, peel the ILM as carefully as possible, and then put it reflected over the optic pit. That, that's yeah, right. cool. you, and you brought up a, a great technique. I think that that uh, is something that, again, as you said, there, there are very few of these you see in your career. This is an oldie but goodie for me and, and the way I saw this patient. So let's show you the video and kind of what we're doing for this patient. And we'll play the video here uh, for you. So you can see very easily the actual uh, um, macular detachment. Here you can see the Kenalog is used to assist in the hyaloid elevation and I'm gonna actually um, uh, take um, some time and look at the macula and you can see how thin the retina is just above that. I'll just pause it for a moment just to show you that again. And I can use the intraoperative OCT to really scan that image to look at, looking at all aspects of it. So here you can see I elevated the hyaloid and what you can see right off the bat is, especially in some of these cuts that that little piece of tissue that was elevated just at the level of the um, optic nerve is still there. And in fact, uh, you know, the, the lion's can is pretty much show you that 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 tissue may be the reason for the tenting there. And so just to per, just to and you can see actually in this frame, especially the communication of the pit. You see that right there. And that's beautiful. Um, so what we're doing, these are the tools we didn't have before. Right. So this is really real time imaging. Absolutely. 
this is where you really can kind of nerd out on an intraoperative OCT where looking at this picture now, you see the thinness of the retina and you see how this tissue is so uh, kind of draped across the retina. So we don't know what this tissue is. My assumption was it wasn't inner retina, but it was ILM. And you can see how I placed, you know, I end in green now, and I'm going to use the finesse loop to to look at that a little bit more uh, and and evaluate that. So let's go and look at what what happened in that case now with the finesse loop on that tissue and watch very closely to the retinal surface here as I play the video for you. So you actually can see the uh, in the actual uh, um, finesse loop coming across the retina and picking this tissue up. So I'm watching this. Uh, in real time as I'm as as I'm I'm rubbing this to see how deep is this going to make sure it's not going too deep to penetrate the retinal areas. And you can see very nicely here how that tissue is elevated and I'm following it with the with the forceps and with the finesse loop. And then again I'm adjusting my foot pedal as I'm walking around and looking at that tissue. And I'm being very careful not to peel over the phobia because you can see how thin this area is over here. But I'm not doing that. I'm just peeling in and around the optic nerve. And I wish I did that stuffing technique. In this case, it was so friable that just all kept falling apart. But I knew this was an important component here. So I stopped by just peeling in and around the optic nerve there. I didn't go to the nasal retina at all. Do you do, you do go uh, just to the temporal side or do you go all the way around the, uh, the optic nerve? I, I think, Rishi, I've become an ILM saver. So I, I, I would I typically just do what's necessary because I don't know if I'll ever need the ILM somewhere else to put it over the pit. Because let's say if 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 the uh, temporal ILM wasn't enough, then I've got nasal ILM to drape over the nerve. So I typically do what you did, just kind of go where it's necessary. Yeah. I think here, less is, is, is the best thing, honestly. Yeah. yeah. And just watching at the end of that video, you'll see how thin the retina really is here. Uh, look at how thin that that retina is. That's got to be less than twenty five to forty microns of retinal thickness right there in sent dead central. And and thankfully we did not cause it an inadvertent macular hole, which is always a kiss of death in these scenarios. If you have a macular hole in these scenarios, let's look a little bit about the post operative outcome. So this is the intraoperative OCT and uh, and looking sort of at that area of the pit just to see again the 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 outcome, which you can see again is is post op weak. Uh, one, you know, we did do air. We did not do gas in this patient. We only did air. And you can see again, the pit is closed and you have the resolution of the fluid. And in fact, when you look at the pre and post-op day six, you see that nice improvement in the fluid. And again, uh, just a nice overall state. So this is a, one of those situations in which, again, I think intraoperative OCT can be a very, very beneficial to determining how we see these patients, um, how we evaluate them. And overall, can be a very, very nice way of of making sure that we uh, achieve the operative results here, which is to peel the ILM in and around the optic pit to flatten that area of the macular detachment. And you know, one thing, Rishi, I think that's important for people to realize when you do this, it will take months for this fluid to go away. So this is not something that happens, you know, within several weeks. So I always tell patients, this is like life. This is a long game. And I think we have to play the long game in retina and patients' expectations have to really be in line to what we can do with these patients. Uh, and uh, knowing that, yes, there's an option, uh, but it is going to take some time. Yeah, well said.